what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that like button leave a comment and share the video so today i am going to be doing a long overdue video this is going to be on my 2020 gun collection i've been having a lot of people ask me to do this video um i honestly been wanting to do the video but i really haven't had time so uh, i just got back from a jog so that's why i'm Still in my workout clothes and I thought let me just get knock this video out get it out the way so that being said oh and I do not have all the guns with me well all my guns I think I'm missing my Sentry Arms M92 um, chambered in 762 by 39 the AK pistol I'm missing my Raging Bull Taurus and 454 pistol my Glock 29 the 10 millimeter my Glock 33 and 357 SIG and Springfield, a couple other guns, but I have quite a few with me, so I'm gonna show y'all what I have right now. Let me start off with this bad boy. Oh, this one's heavy. So this right here, this is my Ruger Precision rifle, chambered in 338 Lapua. Um, this is the magazine for it. It's a big, it's a big ass magazine. It is bolt action. Let me show y'all that it is clear. Safe direction. Bang. Now this gun is super accurate out the gate. Look at that muzzle break on that. That thing is huge. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but if you guys see one of these in real life, it's heavy and it's huge. I think the 338 is the strongest caliber out of the Ruger Precision line. So on top, I got a Strike Eagle uh, Vortex Glass. Uh, Four by tw four through twenty-four by fifty, not bad. I mean, you cannot beat Vortex with the, their warranty. You can find some better glass, but as for warranty, you break their, um, you break one of their their optics or something like that, they replace it on them. No questions asked, no nothing. I had nothing but good experiences with Vortex, so that's why I carry a lot of their stuff. And as for this, I mean, it, as you've seen it. Has an adjustable and collapsible stock, and you could shoot it through this way. I don't know why you would, but it's possible if you wanted to do that. And that's my Ruger. Oh, another thing I want to add: I'm just not going to be like a review. This is not going to be an overview of any of the guns, and just kind of give you a little facts about some of them. Just basically showing y'all, giving y'all a little something about what I think about this. Next. I have my Dickinson. This is clear. Um, this is a 12 gauge. Nice little shotgun. Not much to say about this. Uh, stainless steel finish on it. Nice little shotgun. I ain't never had no problems with it. So, and it was pretty cheap, honestly. So, I mean, it is what it is with this. Got to, it does have the pistol grip. I love the grip on this one little rubber pad in the, in the stock and that's that this I think is the funnest for me let me, let me show you all that this is clear Bang. Um, this is the funnest shotgun I'm like I love shooting this gun I had this for a while this is the Mossberg shockwave chambered in 12 gauge this is the survival edition or something like that it came in that orange too I'm pretty sure if you if you guys know about it, you guys know how it looks. Um, and they, I think they make this in like three other finishes or two other finishes, black, I've seen a brown, and I think that's it, honestly. And I think this, I think there's more, but I mean, that's the one that comes to my mind right now. So this is a nice little shotgun. Um, they also make it in 20 gauge. I don't know if they make the survivor kit in 20 gauge, but I know that they make the shockwave in 20 gauge. And that's this, but if you if you don't have the power or the grip to hold this, this gun's gonna be a nightmare for you. So I suggest if you don't have it and you're looking to get one, try it out before you shoot it because it doesn't have a stock in this bird's head grip or whatever. It's mad slippery. And I mean, you guys could get the little grip tape or whatever, but I mean, I don't seem to have a problem with this. So I just kind of left it as it is. But yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about buying one, try it out before you shoot it, especially if you're gonna get it in 12 gauge. But overall, I feel like this is a fun gun. Like any, anybody I had shoot this, they was for the most part able to control it. I even had females shooting this and they was able to control it. So 
That's the Mossberg Shockwave. Let's get into some pistols. This right here, my Ruger 1911. SR 1911, let me drop that mag. So yeah, that it is empty. And some of my pistols do have rounds in the magazine, but I took all of them. I took all of the rounds out the head, so. Make sure that's clear. Bang. Put the mag over here. Now this is my Ruger. SR 1911. This was my carry pistol. I, I, I never had no problems with it, but I just kind of, I still carry it sometimes, but not as much as my Rock Island. Just more rounds. That one has more rounds and it's smaller, more compact. So, I mean, this gun, I never gave me any problems. I like the weight, the feel of it. It's, it's medium size. It's not too small, but it's not big either, but it is, it does got some heft to it. So it is pretty heavy. Um, but all in all, I really like this gun, the G10 grip. I, I don't really like these grips, honestly. I would have preferred some wooden grips or something like that, but I mean, it is what it is. It's a nice little gun though. Super accurate, super reliable. I took this to the range. I don't think I had any malfunctions with it out the box. So that's that. Um, this. Okay. So this is my that back, show y'all it's empty. Clear. Um, this is my Palmetto State Omri AK-47. And I know a lot of people talk about American-made AKs, but I mean, for me, this, this gun been pretty accurate and pretty reliable. Even though it's American-made, I really haven't had any problems with it and I shot like thousands of rounds through this already. I like the Magpul furniture that comes with it. I put this mid because it comes with a um, rail attachment thing to it. So I put this Midwest industry thing for it. Like you can put a red dot with gold, whatever you want to put on it. And for the most part, oh, and I put a, a vertical grip on it. Um, yeah, this thing pretty much eats anything you put through it. And I, I like that it's collab, collapsible. And you can still shoot it. And you can still maintain the, the, um, the charging handle. So, not really, I mean, it's not super comfortable to shoot, but if you have to, you will be able to shoot it like that. I mean, it really doesn't get in the way, but it is what it is. Especially for the price I got it at. Nice little, this is the, the GF3, I think whatever but this is a nice gun I like it and here I think this is my most recent one this is my arsenal Sam 7k I'm not sure this is clear this is I think my favorite AK that I have clear now this this is the only milled receiver gun that I have chrome line barrel um, I love that it has the like like I showed you guys in my other video the hinge dust cover anybody who owns AKs knows that this is probably the biggest problem you're gonna have with them well the biggest headache it's not really a problem some some of them going smooth some of them you gotta really kind of get the right angle and put them in but it is what it is I like this gun I think this is the best AK pistol you can buy. Well, not the best. Like, they make a 44 because if you can see this, this thing right here, this little muzzle brake or whatever, flash hider, it's really pointless because the barrel actually comes to the end of it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the barrel comes to the end of it. Um, but they, re, they redid this and they cut it off right here. So they cut that barrel off. They put something on the back um, I mean, you still get your sling, but you also get a rail, so you can mount like a arm brace. Um, and I feel like that's the perfect one. But I still like this, and it also comes with a little thing for a rail. So this is the Arsenal Sam 7K AK-47. These things then went through the roof in price. Like, they went dummy. I don't think their Arsenal is doing these anymore. So you go online, you try to get from gun broker, people ask for two racks for them. But, I mean, I'm glad I got one. This is probably 
this and probably my sentry arm is probably the only AK pistols I will, I'll never get rid of. This is my Polish Hell Puppy Leap. Let's go ahead and check that. Make sure it's clear. Take that safety up. Now this gun is super smooth, honestly. Like I love shooting it. But I mean somebody posts something on the on the internet about oh the Polish Hell Pups. Um, they're not reliable, they'll break, they'll blow up in your face or whatever, but I've never seen actual proof of that, it's just kind of hearsay, so I mean it is what it is, I never had no problems with this gun, this this gun runs honestly really smooth, I after shooting like, I think I shot like 300 rounds with it, I checked internals, nothing seems to be like super like bad or getting worn super quick or whatever, so I mean for what it is, I mean, it's a, it's a nice AK pistol, and these are super hard to find also. On top, I got a Vortex magnifier and a red dot. Um, so this one comes, this is the Polish Elite. So this one comes with a rail attached to it. So you, you really keep your zero pretty well. So, I mean, I like that for what it is. Um, oh, and I put the whole grips on this one. I didn't put the whole grip on my Arsenal. So my Arsenal is came with the original I mean I kept the original on it only because it ha it does have this safety I'm not sure if I want to get rid of that yet um, so it does have that I mean it has it on both sides so I'm pretty sure if I put a whole grip on this one it will I'll have to take this this little thumb safety off or whatever so that's that right here is my DP 12 12 gauge let me go ahead Clear that out. Now this, this is probably a shotgun that I'll never get rid of. This is super hard to find right now. I, I can't seem to find another one, especially in OD Green. You could probably find one in black, but they had it in white, OD Green, brown, and black. Uh, this is the one I wanted. So, and when I paid for it, I think I got it for $1,060, brand new. Um, all the little extras on it is everything came from DP12, a riser, uh, uh, angled thing right here with, for the iron sights. Um, the the red dot came from it. Um, the stiletto chokes, whatever. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they this all came from standard manufacturing. And this gun is, I mean, this shotgun is built like a tank. I'm telling you, like. If you guys can get one of these, um, lately I've been seeing them in a couple of movies. They've been in uh, Will Smith, Gemini Man, and in that new Terminator. They both had the DP-12 in there. It's, uh, I guess they built this gun for the, I don't know if it's military or police or something like that, but for some reason they didn't end up using it, and they sold it. I guess they started just selling it to the public, but I love this shotgun. It, even on the butt pad, it has like some springs attain that recoil and this thing holds I want to say 16 rounds 16 16 shells or whatever and each for each pump you get two pulls of the trigger which is super dope I love this gun right here and so just I just love this gun all right one of my 454 consoles the super red hot Alaskan at that show y'all that it is empty now this gun I don't know I mean I it's really not practical unless you live in like I mean this gun was made for like bears like bear country or whatever so if you're not out there then it's really not practical I mean you yeah I mean yeah, that's really well like this this is meant to shoot big game like big animals or I guess you can use it with like wild hogs if you're down south and you have a problem with wild hogs or something because this one is really accurate my um my tour is raging bull that one I like that gun because it it um gives you uh, um, faster follow-up shots because it does have the porter barrel so it tends to keep the muzzle down more but this one is it's so much smoother than that one like shooting it and the grips on this it got like a gel insert in the back of this 
and it's just like it's like butter like it just like I mean regardless you shoot full um 454 rounds that's gonna beat up your hand regardless but this grip definitely helps it definitely helps that other one has like a hard plastic grip I really don't like it but in my opinion I feel like the Taurus if you're looking for something to make a, a like a really loud bang at the range I say go with the Taurus range you pull because I don't know if it's the port or what it is but that gun tends to be louder like it can shoot the exact same ammo and that gun tends to be louder than this one this one is just super like the build quality on this is unmatched especially for what I paid now do I say that this gun is twice worth twice as much as the Taurus no but for what I paid I paid brand new for the Taurus I paid 700 for this one I paid 800 so for that yeah even if I even if this one was a thousand that one's 700 then I'll still go with this and, um, for the customer service alone like the tourist customer service sucks like I hate dealing with them I had a, they have um, some type of cosmetic warranty if you turn if you have a problem within the first year or something they'll replace it for free so I had a problem with the grip and I called them that was maybe three years ago <laughs> And they still haven't got back to well they said okay everything's processed so we'll be sending it out that was like three years ago so it is what it is i'm not really worried about it um but yeah i, I say if you want a more quality gun go with this one i mean the taurus honestly haven't given me any problems but i just feel like this is better quality you really not gonna have you're really not gonna have any problems with either one of them but i would trust this one better so that is the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan, chambered in 454 console and 45 long coat. This gun right here. <laughs> this is a Jimenez Arms. This this should be a toy gun. This is like a 380. Um, this gun is a piece of crap. Honestly, this gun is a piece of crap. Like, first of all, my hands are too big for it. So when I grab it and I shoot it I get I get I get bit all the time from this like no matter how much times I try to pull my hand down it um it just it gets me every time this gun jams with almost every single type of ammo that I put through it you you can't really get a full mag through it I mean you get what you pay for this gun was super cheap but Remember that because this gun is about the same price I paid for my, uh, my, one of my other guns that's really cheap. I mean, I mean you guys are probably going to roast me for that one, but this gun is this crap. Like, I hate this gun. Like, I, I would throw this away right now. But it's a human is on. I think they're out of business, actually, which I don't blame them. 380. So this one, this does have something in me because this is my carry gun. So this is my Rock Island Armory BBR. Um, the thing should be clear. I got that. This is um, 1911 all steel. This is a double stack. 1911. That's got the ported barrel on it. Um, I think both are ported. So it's not just for look. The barrel and the slide is ported. Honestly, like I love this gun. It does have a really fat grip to it, so if you don't have bigger hands, and this gun is, you're just gonna jump everywhere. You're gonna catch yourself keep um, readjusting your grip, especially shooting at 45 ACP, which this one's chambered in. I don't know if I told you about that already. But this one's chambered in 45 ACP. So I mean, if you don't have bigger hands, this gun is gonna jump around a little bit. But for me, it's manageable and it's super accurate. I love shooting this gun. But that is, the only thing, only complaint I do have about this is this right here. It will like dig into your palm. So just an FYI for that. But other than that, I love this. This is my new, this took the place of this one. So, I mean the size difference is not too much, but for the, the grip, the grip is shorter on this one. And this one holds 10 rounds. I think this one holds seven i think so obvious choice i mean they're both good guns they're both really accurate i haven't had any problem i think i had one malfunction with this but after that one or two i can't remember but after that 
this ran flawlessly, this one ran flawlessly out the gate. So, and I paid a pretty good price for both of them. I, I really can't remember, but I know I looked this one up afterwards, and this one went well, going for like three, three hundred dollars more than what I paid for it. And this one, I think it's like a hundred dollars or like two hundred dollars up right now. So, I mean, that's that. Arms Core DVR. Sabered in 45 ACP. This one does have the adjustable rear sight too. This is my hell gun. Like I hate this gun with a passion. I really like if you guys can tell I really don't like AR. AR type rifles, pistols, whatever you want you want to call it. Um well this is a Palmetto State. Let me go ahead and show y'all that it is empty. Okay, that's locked back. So, about this gun, this is, I don't know, I hate this gun. Like, I took this gun to the range, like, out the box. I took this gun to the range, and I think we had fired off maybe 70 rounds through it. And so the trigger started getting stuck. And naturally, you point the pistol down. I mean, you got, that's, that's the, that's why I stress, like, gun safety or whatever, point the pistol down to like check it, clear it if something's wrong with it. Um, but they had a round in it and I went, I went to point it down and the gun went off. I didn't touch the trigger. I didn't pull the charging handle back. I just point, as soon as I pointed it down, the gun went off like right there by my foot. Um, so I was trying to see what the problem was with it. So I did, um, I did keep it pointed in a safe direction. I put another bag in it. Um, loaded another thing and I was having problems with the trigger again but this time I was just like okay I'm done with this gun for today so I took the took the mag out I tried to um take out the um the round but it wasn't catching so I kept I was pulling this and it wasn't catching so I let it go bang the gun went off again so I will be sending this back to Paul Metal and after it I mean they they're probably gonna fix it because they do got a good warranty but I am definitely going to be getting rid of this gun. So that's that. I mean, I do like the adjustable um, arm brace. But for what this is, I mean, it's, it was really accurate. It was a really nice, fun gun to shoot. This is chambered in 300 blackout. In case I didn't say it already. Um, it was really accurate. It was, it was fun to shoot. But after that, I just know. I'm not giving that a second chance. That thing almost shot my foot off. The big baby right here. <laughs> this is my Desert Eagle. Chambered in 50 AE. So yes, it is the big boy. I mean, you can change out the the barrels, I think, to 357 Magnum. Um, you can have 44 Magnum. I think you can also get a 41 Magnum. But this gun is gorgeous. The walnut grips and the Desert Eagle, the golden Desert Eagle. Um, plastered on that and yes it's on both sides this gun is empty that's how you lock it back big big ass rounds through that and it got a kind of a a rifle type of bow or whatever so this gun is really fun, fun to shoot um it does hurt like i'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you this gun does hurt and for some reason it chugs you have to wear your eye protection with this you guys see one of my shooting videos you guys will see that this one was chucking the the brass straight back so it's not going out of angles coming straight back at you so i didn't really like that but this is probably one of the coolest guns that i have look wise that case hardened and every case hardened gun you got each one of them is going to be different so i'm super glad i got this one because these are really hard to find now too and if you can find them, you're going to pay a lot for them. So that's my Desert Eagle, chambered in 58. And I also love that golden um, trigger. Desert Eagle, chambered in 58. It's my CMMG Mutant. Let me go ahead and check y'all. So this one is empty. There's the mag. Everything's clear off of this. So this, I know I'm probably gonna get some hate off of this. This is a AR looking AK. It's one of those things. 
Um, I have a striped eagle one to one through eight. I mean one to eight by 24 on top of it. Like I said, I like striped eagles vertical grip. This gun, honestly, I've never had any problems with this gun. It does have such an adjustable stock on it. I've never had any problems. This gun eats up everything and spits it out. Like I, I love shooting it, but I just, I really don't like the AR. But I figured I would try this. I know AK people are gonna give me hell for that just because it looks like an AR. AR people don't really like it because it's chambered in 762. Um, so I mean, it's like a love hate relationship for some people. But for me, I do like it, but I really don't shoot it a lot. I mean, I, I have ran a lot of rounds through it, but for me, I don't know. I'd rather take a traditional AK over this one any day, but this is a super fun gun to shoot. Takes every mag, and the thing I like about it, like something you don't get of, um, something you don't get out of every AK, I mean every um, AR style AK, is the mags. Like a lot of them won't you won't be able to take the standard AK mags. This one takes standard AK mags. You have to get like these special made mags. It's kind of straighter, kind of almost goes in like an AR or something like that. But this one goes in like a traditional AK, tilt it, and walk straight in. But for what it is, this is a really nice gun, super accurate to shoot. So that's it. CM oh, this is made by CMMG, in case I didn't say that. Um, the Mutant. Chamber 762 by 39. So this right here, let me make sure this one's clear. Drop this mag. This is my Smith & Wesson MMP Shield. This is the easy version. So, I mean, this gun would be really good for people without strong hands who can't really like pull that slide back. Women or older people or even some men that can't really get that slide. Um, Cause I met a lot of people that that's the hardest part of the gun to them is trying to rack that round, put that round in that, in that gun. Make sure I make sure that the thing was clear. Um, honestly, I like this gun. This one's chambered in 9mm. I think they have a 380 because you don't like shooting the 9 version. Um, this one's pretty nice though. Um, it's really accurate. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, for the price I paid for it, yeah, I, I would definitely buy this one again. Uh, this is a nice seal carry gun. It's very light. Um, I mean, yeah, that's all I really can say about this. For as long as you keep it clean, do what you're supposed to do. I feel like this gun is going to run for a while. So that's the Smith & Wesson m &P. Shield is the easy version in case y'all want that. Okay. Now this is my Dan Wesson. I don't think I don't have a mag in there. So this gun. This is like the closest you can come to buying a custom 1911. That's not an actual custom made 1911. The Dan Wesson Razorback is chambered in 10 millimeter. And I love this gun. This is the most accurate gun that I have, for me at least. But I was experiencing, I, don't, I forgot what that word is called, but basically when a slide locks up on a 1911, on a stainless steel gun, slide will lock up. Because I, I mean, it's super tightly finished. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it's like it's super. It's made. It's made really well. But um, I contacted the company. Um, I think CZ got them now. Contacted them. They sent it. Sent it right in. They fixed it. Sent it back. Never had no problems with it. I did change the spring out. Um, I had a problem with the gun locking back. So it was locking back, and I, I it still had a round in it. So it wasn't just locking back on the last round. I had more rounds in the magazine and it's gonna lock back. But ever since I changed it, I used the M Carbo um, uh, 1911 spring. Um, I'm not sure, I think I used the 16 pound because this is chambered in 10 millimeters. So I used a stronger, um, stronger spring and I haven't had any problems since. I mean, it is a little tougher, but I haven't had any problems with that, and that's the Dan Wesson Razorback 1911. Look at that shine on this. I love these grips, too. I have probably the best looking 
1911. I know people's gonna hate this one. No mag, uh, no magazine in there. Queen. People's gonna hate this one, but this is a Kimber 1911 Black Ice Repeat. Oh man, um, this is uh, for me. This is probably the best looking 1911 I've ever seen. Um, I know people got their taste. Um, if this one does have the nice sights on it, I'm trying to show y'all that with pointing the gun at me. The grips, I I I love everything about this. I I don't really like the extended bagwell. I'm not working on speed reloading or whatever. So I like how it's flush, like on this one. But this one is extended, so I would say that's the only thing I don't like about this gun. But this gun is pretty accurate. It has all these lightning cuts on it um, to make the slide lap, um, lighter for faster shots or something like that, follow-up shots or whatever they did that for. But it's like a two-tone gray. I don't know if you guys can tell that on camera. But this is a beautiful gun, Kimber. And out the gate, I was having mad problems with this. But it's crazy. Like, I would have problems with this gun only when I would use the Kimber magazine. When I would use a Kimber magazine, this gun was crap. I, I almost couldn't get through like a mag without it doing a failure to feed. I think I had one failure to eject. Um, but yeah, this gun was just running horribly, especially for the price that you pay for it and they only give you one magazine. That's crazy. But I paid, for this one I paid I think 1200 Brand new, got it when it first came out. But something I do like about this gun, it's just super smooth. It's it, honestly, it kind of feels a little bit smoother than my damn Weston. I don't know. Sometimes it depends. But that is my Kimber Black Eyes Repeat. I know a lot of people like mostly older people hate this gun because they think 1911 should be like you know traditional, kind of like this. This is like a traditional 1911. How oh, it should look. This is like new millennium type 1911. But I mean, I like both of them. Um, oh, and another thing I like about this is the finish they put on the barrel. Because I feel like like once that finish starts wearing out, the gun starts looking bad and whatever. Um, but the, I've ran a lot of rounds through this, and that finish is yet to even blemish, honestly. Nice um, skeletonized trigger, hammer. Overall, this is a pretty nice gun. And ever since I've been using my Wilson Combat magazine or my Dan Wesson magazine, this gun has had zero issues. Zero. So, um, I would rate this as pretty reliable. And it does have an ambidextry of safety. So, safety on both sides. So, that's that. Now this one does have rounds in the mag, but no rounds in the head. Micro Draco. This AK I'll never get rid of. I love this AK. I mean, I don't know between this one and the Arsenal. I don't know because this this is just smaller. I don't know if you guys can tell. Yeah, there you go. This gun's way smaller. Like, I don't see them building another, something else like this because it's so, it has no purpose, but then it does have a purpose. Like, I don't know, if you're like hiking or somewhere, like where there's gonna be wild animals or something, this is an easy gun to put in your backpack or whatever, like, easy to conceal this and you get a lot of firepower with it and for um, close quarters this gun is super accurate for close quarters even like you can take it out a distance if you know what you're doing oh and I know a lot of people noticed that the, the, the hand the wooden thing is is red this is not paint this is like a wood dye I did it myself it's kind of crappy job but I mean, it looks alright for what it is. Got some a little blemish on that, but yeah, I mean, it it, it looks alright. 
Um, I like the way it looks. I had an extra one, so I thought if I mess this one up, I'll just use that one. Man, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about it. It's a, it's a wood stain, not not a dye, but a, a wood stain. And if you guys watch my last video, y'all will see what happened to this rear sight. It's, it's horrible. Um, yeah, go watch my video on the review on this one versus the the Polish Health Up Elite. You see what happened with this this um, rear sight on this. It's just ridiculous. But I did put the cold grip on it, and I never had no problems with this gun, honestly. Other than this, this gun ran flawlessly. I would trust this gun for my life right here. So. Yeah, that's what it is. Michael Draco. I would never get rid of this gun for the plain and simple fact that this is the smallest AK variant. So it's an AK pistol, but the smallest AK variant you can buy. I think it's like a 7 inch barrel or something, 6 inch barrel, something like that. But, yeah. Micro Draco. I know I'm going to catch hell for this gun right here. But. This was my first gun, disclaimer. This was my first gun. Um, this is one before I knew anything about guns. I, um, and it was super cheap. This is the gun you guys all love. A high point 45. This gun is loaded too. It's, well, it's not loaded, the magazine has, a, has some rounds in it. This gun is like i mean if for your first gun honestly i don't feel like this is a bad gun i feel like this gun gets so much hate because they see other people hate on it and i mean it's an ugly gun for what it is it's an ugly gun but as a reliability like if this i mean real, like this gun's reliable basically i have never never had a failure to feed failure, failure to eject um i have never had anything any problems with this gun at all um, I did get it in the OD green, but I mean, it's, you're getting that, so big, ugly green thing, but this gun has been super reliable. I've had this gun for like, like nine years, never had nothing wrong with this gun. I've never even cleaned this gun, and this gun to this day runs flawlessly. I shoot it all the time, but uh, it has a little thing for a flashlight at the bottom. And I paid like $200, $180 for this gun. And you get unbelievable customer service. I remember I did something to the grips. Like, so I was trying to change out the grips and I did something to them. And the grips wouldn't stay in. I sent it back. They fixed it, sent it right back to me with an extra mag. Like, their customer service is out of this world. But the gun is ugly, but it's super reliable. Yeah. Like, I. It's heavy, so this is not something you're gonna still carry because it got this really cheap plastic um, handle and trigger and all of that. But this brick slide, this slide is like a brick. So if all those fellas with this gun, you use this as a hammer, you ain't gonna have no problem. But yeah, that's my high point. <laughs> this gun, I don't know. I don't know if I get rid of it, mainly because it was my first gun and it's a high point and when you take this to the range I mean people who know about guns is probably gonna laugh but I mean this gun's gonna run like that's all that matters so I mean if you have a high point or if this is all you can afford I don't find I don't see a problem with it I mean yes it's ugly it's ugly compared to like a 1911 or um, even my Desert Eagle but look at the size of that like it's down there in the size of that Desert Eagle. I like that's crazy. But I mean, yeah, you get what you pay for. This is this gun I paid, I think about 1500 for it. I think um, this gun was like $200. So you get what you pay for. It. And this gun is the same, damn near the same price as this. And this is a piece of crap. You can't shoot this with, with anything. Like, and this is shoot. 45 ACP. So I've never had any jam. I think people have jams with the 9mm version of this, of the high point. But as of the 45, because I think the only problem you would have is trying to, you have to shoot full power loads. Or it's, it's going to have a problem trying to shoot, um, 
try to kick this slide back because it's, it's like this slide is mad heavy. So this my high point, um, 45 ATP. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's all the guns that I have right now. So if you guys want to, if you guys want to see me do a more in-depth review of any of them, especially this one, I have some people. I might do an in-depth review on this one. Um, show you the breakdown, show you kind of some stuff about it. So if you guys want um, me to do an in-depth review on any one of these guns that you've seen here, um, leave that in the comments. If you guys want to see me shoot any of them, also leave that in the comments. And make sure you like the video. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for me. And share this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.